Am I dumb? What's up guys, this is Earl the Rookie Woodworker and today I'm going to work on this gate which is going to keep the dogs out of a room while allowing the cats to have a free pass. So let's get to it. Alright, I'm going to kick this project off with chopping up and milling down some walnut lumber. Now I'm using some one inch thick walnut but the plan is to mill it down and glue, glue them together three pieces at a time to uh, get this gate to be about two and a half to two and three quarters inches thick. When I'm milling down pieces for my projects, I like to use my jointer to get one flat side before I go using the thickness planer. And what that does is make sure that I have one side that's perfectly flat. You notice as I push it through there, I'm literally just pushing it through the cutter head and not applying any pressure down onto the board. Because if you put pressure down onto the board, you end up bending it a little bit and then you don't achieve that perfect uh, uh, flat side that we're going for here. See, a lot of people think that the planer will make a board perfectly flat, but that's not the case because the rollers that feed the planer ends up putting that pressure down on top of it, flattening it out before it starts cutting it. And then when it exits, it releases all that tension and then it goes back to uh, having crowns or, or curves and stuff in it. So it's best to do this first. That way the one side is perfectly flat. And when you run it through the planer, you run that side down against the table. Because I use a lot of rough cut wood, these tools are among the most appreciated tools in my shop because I use them a lot. But I tell you, I used to have a love-hate relationship with my planer because the rollers would have a hard time feeding the planer and, and the rollers would start spinning out on the wood. And I'd get this piece of wood that's darn near perfectly flat and uh, have one more pass to go on and then the rollers would do a burnout on the wood and leave these nasty grooves and burnout marks in it. But what I found helpful was paste wax. Uh, I found uh, that as a tip on Facebook at uh, one of the pages there and I bought some paste wax and I put it on the tables and, and, and underneath the machine there and those pieces of wood slide through there easy like they're, like they're on ice now. It's, it's uh, pretty remarkable stuff. When I first got it and I opened the can up, this stuff was like super, super dry almost, and, and I really didn't think it was going to work out too well. But I put it on there and uh, rubbed it in, and I didn't expect much out of it, but I fed that first piece of wood through there, and it just slid through there like it was on ice. I was really impressed with it. And, and honestly, it lasts a long time too. I've put some hours on these machines since the last time I coated it with, uh, with some paste wax, but... But it's still sliding through there pretty good. I haven't had any roller spin since. You'll see that I bump my fence out a little bit here. And what I do that for is so that I'm not beating up the same couple helical cutters every project that I do. Um, that way I just move it around and uh, spread out the wear and tear on the helical heads. And now that these boards are perfectly flat, uh, the fence will have a perfectly flat reference point to be able to make the sides a perfect 90 degree and perfectly flat side. That way whenever I go to the table saw and cut these down with the entire piece will be perfectly straight. Then I'll take these pieces over to the table saw and start feeding it some wood to get these pieces down to the width that I need. So the bottom is where things get a little interesting on this gate because the bottom is going to get some wheels and then that's where I'm going to get the extra entryway for the cats. So first thing I'm going to do is cut some wheel wells out of the piece that's going to get sandwiched in the middle at the bottom. All right, so this is how the wheels are going to sit in here like this and then I got to cut this out and this out for the cat door portion of this and then this here will sit on there like that and that's how it'll glue together that's how it'll roll across the floor 
Now before I go cutting up that middle piece in the bottom where the cat door is going to slide in, I'm going to go ahead and build that cat door and I'm going to reference that for the measurements. Just in case things end up off like a couple of millimeters, I don't want to end up with a gap or some troubles later on. It'll be a lot better of an idea to, to build it first, that way I have the actual thing that's going to slide in there to reference it. Of course I bumped the camera before I started gluing this stuff up so now you don't have a good view of uh, how I'm doing it but I'm going to give you what I got anyway so here it is and here's where I realized my error yeah that's that's a little better dummy all right so these wheels that I have here are about 15 16 of an inch wide which is great if you manage to maintain an inch thickness on these metal pieces that are going to be in the middle of the whole way around the gate. But I was not able to maintain an inch thickness on this. Whenever I was milling it down, I ended up having to take it down, uh, down a little less than an inch. So it's about the same width, maybe slightly narrower. So I got a lot of rubbing going on there. So in order to fix that, I'm going to have to route a little bit out of this square right here to give it a little bit of extra room. An eighth of an inch should be plenty enough to give it a little bit of wiggle room and uh, get it to uh, spin freely. Make this gate roll nice and smoothly. So I'm just going to use the router to go ahead and carve that out. It just needs to be carved out whole. It don't really need to be pretty. So you never really need to pay attention to staying inside the lines. Just don't end up blowing it out the top and everything will be fine because it's just going to get sandwiched inside so it don't matter how it looks just get it done and then I'm going to use the table saw to carve out where the uh, cat door opening is going to slide into this piece now you notice I'm going with uh, mortise and tenon joinery um, except for I'm gluing it all together in a way that I'm not really carving anything out so it's kind of like I'm doing mortise and tenon joints but I'm not doing all the mortise and tenon work Except I did have to mill three times as much lumber and uh, have to do some extra glue ups. Uh, so, so it's kind of a give and take. I don't know that this is an easier way of doing it or not, but uh, this is the way I'm doing it. Mainly because I didn't have walnut lumber thick enough to not do it this way. So here we are. And now I'll start getting to gluing all these sides together individually. And then later on I'll be able to glue them all together. With the way we're gluing this together for the mortise and tenon joints, it's really important that after the milling process, all of these pieces are the exact same thickness. Otherwise, you're going to have a really terrible time trying to get these to fit together when it's all said and done. Now that all the four sides are glued up and drying, it's time to put some work into designing a latching mechanism as well as a guide that will guide that gate back and forth. So let's get to that. So I wanted it to be a latching mechanism that's really quick and easy to latch and unlatch. So I want it to be a hook that drops down into the top of the gate as it rolls into it. Then I want to be able to easily lift it up out and roll the gate back with ease whenever getting in and out of the room. So what you see me doing here is taking the image that's in my brain of what I want this thing to look like and uh, trying to draw that out on a piece of wood. And hopefully this thing works. Now my latch is a little bit thick for my scroll saw, so I use the band saw to cut it out. Now this latch is going to sit inside a cutout at the top of this piece. And then in that piece, uh, we're going to drill a hole through the latch and through this piece where a dowel rod will go in there, which will give it its functionality. And it'll sit in there just like that. You kind of want it to be nice and tight from the front view like this, but we'll get into that later. 
So to drill the hole, I'm going to drill the hole in the housing for the latch as well as the latch at the same time so that everything lines up properly because I got it taped exactly where I want it to sit. And to do it, I'm going to use a doweling jig and then I'm going to refuse to clamp it down anywhere to help hold everything in place and nice and straight. <sighs> Am I dumb? But anyway, after getting it right, this is how it works. Just like that. Should work out all right. As always, make life easier by sanding the inside pieces before you glue them all together. Now I cut an angle on the inside of these side pieces. That way if the gate, when it comes rolling in, if it's off to the left or the right just a little bit, it'll bump it to the center and line everything up perfectly. Then from there I left myself a, about a quarter inch of tolerance when the gate slides in there. So it's a quarter inch wider than what the width of the gate actually is. And now I'll work on the gate guide, which is going to be a U-shaped uh, piece of wood that will mount directly to the wall, and it will straddle the top of the gate, guiding it across the doorway. Even though this does not have four sides, I'm still going to glue it together the same way I do boxes. Um, and then I'll wrap some tape around it, and that will kind of work as the fourth side. And hopefully this will work out, because I haven't done it like this before. All right, so this is the piece that gets mounted to the wall and then the gate slides right through here. It keeps everything straight so that the gate goes straight across the doorway and lines right up with its latch. I got this thing uh, nice and glued up. The miter joints are looking pretty tight. And now I need to strengthen them up and I'm gonna use this neat corner dowling jig to uh, go ahead and achieve that. So basically this jig just clamps to the corner and then the drill bit goes down through both pieces that make up the corner. And then you glue a dowel rod down through the holes that you just drilled out. As you can see, my dowel rod's got a little bit tight, so I ended up having to use a rubber mallet and hold my breath and give it a couple love taps to send them the rest of the way through. Fortunately, it didn't crack my, my corners or else uh, that would have been bad. But overall, it went pretty well. I'm pretty happy with how this went and uh, how it turned out in the end. Then I'm going to go back and start working on the mounting points for the wheels. And I'm going to make a recess hole so that the, the nuts, bolts, and the washers will all sit inside this recess. And then I'll be able to cover them with a cap. I'm leaving a quarter inch of wood on both sides for that, that bolt to ride through. And uh, I'm using a lock nut so that I don't have to squeeze down on that wood to get everything to stay tight and then all of the pressure is going to ride up on that washer that's sitting in the middle of the piece. And then I've reached the, the point of the build where I need to work on the vertical bars that will go from the bottom to the top of this piece and coming up with a plan for how I want to put them together. Now because this is a, uh, a pet gate instead of a baby gate, I wanted to make these bars so that they can be removable so that the owner can remove the bars and clean them or even put them on a lathe and polish them if they wanted to because these are going to be aluminum bars. So polishing them to a, a shine on a regular basis might be something that they want to do. And being that it's not a baby gate, the bars can be removable and still serve their purposes with dogs and cats. Um, if it was a baby gate, you'd have concerns about your children being able to remove the bars themselves because uh, children can figure things like that out. So in order to make these bars removable, the bottom holes, I drilled them to go straight down in about a half an inch of depth. And then the top holes, I drilled them to be almost a full inch of depth up into the top. And I drilled straight up in there and then I also put the bit inside the hole and then drilled a little bit sideways on it. That way the bar can be pushed up into the top hole enough to clear the bottom hole and then it would make a turn in that top hole to be able to be pulled down clear of the bottom rail. And again these are going to be pretty easy for you to go ahead and remove so 
Anything with opposable thumbs is going to find it easy to remove. So if you're making this gate for children, you're not going to want to do it like this. You're going to want to build it so that the bars are permanently built into the gate. So then it was time to go ahead and slide the cat door down into its holes. It took some love taps from the, uh, the rubber mallet, uh, a good bit of love taps, and there was just this little tiny bit that it wouldn't slide down in there. So I ended up getting some clamps and clamping it down to my, uh, my workbench, and that, that took that little bit right out. It shoved it right in there pretty, pretty good, pretty easy. Fits like a glove. All right, so this here's the quick latching mechanism that I created. This side here will go against the wall, and then the gate will slide in here, hit that, slide it up, and then this here will drop down into a hole. Now to make that, you wanted the back side of this piece to be slightly rounded so that it can rock back a little bit. And then you want to have the front part of this to be uh, squared off so that when it comes down, it don't come down so far that when the gate comes in it just hits the nose you need that thing uh, to hold itself up a little bit so i made this here squared and the back side of it's rounded so that it come up and down a little bit properly and it's going to work something like this of course i need to carve that out a little bit so that the hook can drop down in there and then grab onto this nice big chunk of wood right here uh, I'm going to leave it a little bit of space uh, forward here from the hook and I'm going to leave a little bit of space side to side because it, I mean it does have a little bit of side to side movement so we want that to fall in every time. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra tolerance. We don't need a tight tolerance for this. Don't let the engineer in you ruin a perfectly good project. So uh, give yourself some room. There's no sense in making that super tight. But yeah, let's get to it. So then with a forcener bit and a drill and a chisel, I just went ahead and cleared all that out of that hole there. Now the bottom of it ends up looking like crap, which is something that you're going to see like a lot. Um, so as long as the side walls look pretty good, I think I got a plan for the bottom that'll, that'll look good for later. But the latching mechanism does end up fitting pretty well. I like it. But now we're to the finishing point, and I'm going to use some clear satin lacquer. And in the words of John Malecki, let us spray. And since we're using aluminum bars, I'm going to use an aluminum plate to dress up that latch hole to make it look clean. And then I'll start installing the bars one by one. Like I said, if you're building this gate for children, you're going to want to uh, have these bars already built in. And they'll be permanently in there. Because children are going to be able to easily remove these bars whenever they want to. Pretty much defeating the purpose of the gate. And just like that, we are done with this project, and it actually works surprisingly well. It opens and closes like a breeze, and a locking mechanism works exactly how I hoped it would. Uh, and it tracks pretty, pretty straight. For the cat door part, I installed a Sure Flap pet door, and what that is is a door that has uh, it's battery powered, and it has a chip reader so that it reads your pet's microchip. So you can let specific animals through this gate while keeping other animals out of it. So for example, you can set it to allow your cats to have access to the room that the gate is gating off by setting it to allow your cat's microchip to pass through the door. And then you can also set it to block your dog's microchips from passing through the door. But that is it for this build. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on the channel. And until next time, make something awesome.